on the principles of governance suggested by MTA. Did anybody get a copy of that or had a chance to look at that? Yes. Um, we need a motion to accept that. So move. Support. Okay, we've got a motion and a support to accept the principles of governance suggested by the Michigan Township Association. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. The next one on the agenda is uh, ordinance amendment to extend the temporary moratorium on the Township Review of Wind Energy Systems. Um, this was it's discussed quite a lot at the Jack's public uh, meeting last, public hearing last week. Um, anybody want to discuss the moratorium? It is, um, this is Ron, by the way, this is Ron Reddick. He's a township attorney out of Micah Myers out of Grand Rapids. His suggestion to us is to pass the moratorium. And I told you people before, we're going to do a lot of stuff that Ron recommends. Um, you guys want to discuss this? Um, Ron has, Ron has made a suggestion, only a suggestion, that we pass a moratorium. You got the, you have the paperwork on that. I do. Chris, the ordinance here. Okay. Do you, do you want to discuss that at all or explain anything or what the last date would be? Sure. I'll be glad to do that. Um, my recommendation is that the, uh, the township uh, extend the moratorium because the, uh, the fact is there is not a sufficient ordinance in place right now and the planning commission is still uh, working on it. Now, as to the specific duration, it is not a uh, specific concern of mine whether it lasts until April as it was originally presented to the planning commission or to August. Uh, the time difference there is, is so minor that I think either one is legally defendable. It's really a practical consideration of how long the planning commission needs to get the job done. If that's how long they believe it takes, that's okay. If the board thinks it should take less time and should move it along quicker, that's also within your discretion. But, uh, so if you wanna have a discussion about the specific uh, duration, that, that's fine. But uh, in any case, I suggest it be enough so that you get the ordinance adopted and in place um, to appropriately regulate wind energy systems. Oh, but I'm sorry, but uh, right now the way the uh, the planning commission uh, recommended it is that it would extend through August 4 of 2022. The idea there was that they wanted at least three quarterly meetings to continue working on it, uh, which would take them through I believe it's about July uh, 28th or thereabouts of next year. The board would then meet on August 4th, and so the moratorium corresponds with when the board would then be able to adopt an ordinance that they recommend. Any discussion? Anybody want to make a motion? I make a motion. How would you like it, Ron? You want to we pass it. What's that? That we, that we pass it. Okay. Accept it. As far as the one for another year? Yes. Okay. We need a support? Support. Okay. We got a motion on the floor that we extend the moratorium for a whole nother year. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Okay. According to Ron, we need to do a roll call vote on that. So, Snyder. Yes. Alpha. Yes. Laper. Yes. Jepson. Yes. Anderson votes yes. Um, <coughs> get that behind us. Um, I would like. Just for a minute, I talked to Jack. Jack is the head of the planning commission. Jack, do you want to talk just for a minute and tell him what your plans are? Um, I've had conversation with a couple of the PC committee people, and um, we're pressed with time. With court, we only are scheduled quarterly meetings, and we can have special meetings throughout the year. Uh, we were having special meetings earlier this spring, and um, I talked to a couple of the members right now. We're going to start meet uh, every month now for a few months to see if we can't hammer this out and get things going the wrong way so we can get ordinance set up. So um, I think uh, we'll probably have a meeting in August, probably like the last Wednesday or something like that. I haven't scheduled it yet, but I need to get a hold of the rest of the PC committee, but we'll be meeting once a month for a while. Thanks, Jack. Okay.
Okay, the next thing under new business, service repair renewal offer from Art. Yeah, it's for the voting equipment. Um, they give us two options. Um, one is if you prepay, it's twenty-one twenty for the year for, or for five years. I'm sorry. And then if you that's that's the full amount. If you prepay, you save ten percent, and it makes it nineteen oh eight for five years. Or we can do a monthly plan, plan but it's. it's what do they have to do? <clears throat> Yeah, the contract had um, to come out and do the updates on all oh, that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. all right. yeah. I'll make a motion that we sign the renewal offer for part for the election equipment and pay it all in one lump sum. Support. The motion has been made and supported that we pay hard for a five year service contract, basically. All those in favor say aye. All right. Aye. Opposed? Motion period. And you got a resolution to approve credit card acceptance policy, Rhonda? Yes. That um, was something that was suggested by our auditors. Um, and I had Ron um, do one up for me. I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> Wrote one up for is me. That, is that so people can pay with credit cards for the rent rental of the hall? Yeah, even though they, they already do, but the okay. auditors just suggested that we actually have it on file. made and supported that we approve the resolution to approve credit card acceptance policies. All those in favor say aye. 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 It needs to be roll call too. Okay. Snyder? Yes. Elbaugh? Yes. Layford? Yes. Jepson? Yes. Anderson? Yes. That resolution is approved. Um, Dave, do you usually have some stuff to bring before the board? For uh, the month of July, there were two permits issued. Uh, both were for decks. One was at 531 Woodland Drive, and the other one is at 4040 East Shore Drive. There's a couple violations that are coming up with the deadline. I don't have the address. I just happened to pull the file out right before I came here, but I'm working on a couple of them too. So that's Thanks. it. Thanks, Dave. Okay, now we will proceed with public comment. Basically, they can't find a uh, new impeller, so they want a whole new fan. They want a thousand dollars from the and all each entity. So I don't know if I need a motion on that, or just have Ronnie write them a check. Or do they want it right away? Yeah. A motion to be able to pay it right away. I'll make a motion that we write a check to. supported the ready check to the fire department for a thousand dollars. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And then Brian, fire chief at Stanton, came up. They need, need new air packs. Fourteen of them is two hundred or one hundred and twenty one thousand mm. uh, dollars. I didn't I told him I'd bring it before the board. Like I talked to Terry a little bit. We just spent 200 and some thousand on a truck two years ago. My feelings is that they, I don't know why they need 14 new ones uh, all at once. Uh, the problem, what, what are those? What the are air those? packs, the pack they put on and, you know, they go oh, okay. to inside. Okay, gotcha. I think it's like $8,500 a piece they cost. I'm sure they have an expiration. They do. I imagine they do, but why would you buy 14 new ones? Because so many years, all 14 are going to be. <laughs> I don't know. They only got 16 firefighters on the. Why would they? I don't know. But I, 
this seemed like a lot of money they wanted for all. Well, they were going to finance it for five years, and it would end up costing the township five thousand dollars or six thousand dollars a year. So it would be like thirty thousand dollars it would cost us. Each, each entity. Each entity. You know, and I, I can't believe that the, uh, Brian claims that every fire department uses a different air pack. And I'm thinking, why don't you guys get together? Everybody use the same air packs, the same equipment, so you wouldn't call, end up costing everybody so much. But there, those, each, each uh, fire department, well, Amy knows because Al's the chief. Everybody thinks that their fire department's the best. So I mean, it's 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 kind of disgusting. But I don't know where we could come up with a. I don't know how much how much is our uh, our millage. Our millage. Right our millage right now is about enough to cover the fire cost of fire coverage. And I told Brian. And I do have some of the savings from before, but not. I mean, that would burn up. Told Brian that the last time our millage was renewed, we lowered it. Yeah. We lowered it because we were getting so much money. I didn't figure we should take taxpayers' money and just stick it in the bank. But you know, it'd be kind of nice to have a little bit of a sinking fund too. They just renewed it last year too, so the bond won't, or the millage won't come due again for four more years. Four more years. So I mean, and he kept harping on, "Well, you've got a millage." Well. But it's it's the raise. millage's problem is, is everybody wants to raise every year, and I, for you don't know, we uh, Douglas Township pays three different fire departments. We pay Stanton, McBride, which is Day Township, and Belvedere, and all of them ask for a raise this year. So our fire department budget is getting ate up pretty fast. So I don't know what the board's feelings is on it, but mine was I, I don't know. I'd like to see what the other townships do first, too. So. So that's what you're just it. So check with other when you, you don't have another meeting here next quarter, right? No, but I can call Brian. He was the one. He texted me last night to remind me of the, about the fan. Is that the fire protection? 7,500 is what Belvedere charges us. That's for that corner over there by the Indian Lake. A month? No. No, a year. That's Fire departments cover certain sections of the township. It's like Belvedere's got that, that corner over there. They're the smallest. And then Day has the north side of Hill is north. 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 Um, except for that corner. And then um, Stanton is south. And then that, and all the and then <coughs> so that's, that was my, I mean, after I thought about it a while, I thought, man, that's a lot of money to. We just got done spending two hundred and thirty or forty thousand on the truck or more. Ask him to look for a grant. He claims he can't find they can't they can't get anybody to write a grant because they can get it to go through. They've tried the only time they ever and I don't know how late you are, they seem to get grants all the time. Did you check with college students? To write grants? Who are learning it? Okay. But I just me, I'll do some for <coughs> okay. But I, I just it seems to me they have a fire a fire chiefs association here in the county. Yeah, it's the meetings tonight. Oh, it's tonight. Okay, <laughs> then we know where Al is. But why those guys don't get together and have one person like run the whole for the county and say, hey, you know, guys, we're gonna, we're gonna go with this this air pack so everybody can buy. You know, if you need one or two. You know, Belvedere might need one or two, they can go together and buy them. But I, like I said, everybody's so independent on those fire departments, it's unreal. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, wanna, I mean, Terry Peterman's on from, well, if you don't know, the Stanton Fire Department consists of Douglas, Sydney, Evergreen, and the city of Stanton. So that's. That's who the four entities are. And uh, Andy Ross represents uh, Evergreen, and Terry Peterman is from Sydney. And I'm on the, the Douglas.
Yeah. So, and then Roy, um, is it Ray or Roy? Ray. Holloway. The Holloway from the city of Stanton down there. So. I mean, it, I kind of feel bad because the city of Stanton kind of gets hosed on the deal because they help pay for our tanker truck and they don't use the tanker truck. So, they, of course, then again, they have more fires there too. So, that's all I got. Do you have anything, Amy? I do it taxes. I do it September fourteenth. So we're collecting the tax. Pat, do you have anything? Rhonda. We got our audit stuff back. Everybody should have a copy of it. It's been here some days. Got it too. So it's probably this one right there. <laughs> yeah. You want to go through it, or did you already no. go through it and everything is good? <laughs> okay. Anybody else have anything else? I think we got through our business. Um, what I'm going to do, we got three people on the agenda that are going to get 10 minutes each. And then after that, we'll go around the room and we'll cut it back to like three minutes per person. Um, Laura, do you want to be first? Sure. Thanks, Terry, for allowing me to uh, speak at the August meeting. The large crowd that attended the July 28th Planning Commission meeting in this room attests to the fact that alternative energy is foremost in the minds of many people. The vote to put a moratorium on the proposed wind ordinance will hopefully allow the Planning Commission to regroup itself and correct the numerous flaws <laughs> in the proposed ordinance as it currently stands. It would be so easy for the commission to bow to the pressure being exerted on them by those who oppose the location of wind turbines in Montcalm County in any way, shape, or form. The opposing group is, to its credit, well-organized and well-financed. It has been unremitting in its efforts to stymie the efforts of Apex Clean Energy in its quest to offer an alternative, alternative to non-renewable fossil fuels in the generation of electricity. By doing so, the group has also denied reliable scientific studies that show that no one's health, safety, or welfare will be negatively impacted by the carefully planned location of wind turbines in this township. It has also denied the wishes of landowners who may want to make a profitable use of odd-shaped corners of fields that do not lend themselves to crop production. It further denies the county of tax monies that would benefit county government, law enforcement, and our schools. I would hope and pray that the Planning Commission resist the impulse to take the easy route and defer to the siren calls of those who oppose wind energy. This in spite of the fact that the anti-wind proponents offer no solutions to the problems that will arise with the ever-increasing demands for electricity other than to kick the can down the road and hope the apex will go away. The Planning Commission has a daunting and thankless task before it. Who of us would volunteer to replace any member of that committee? I doubt many would agree to serve on a committee whose members are under so much public scrutiny. However, I have been somewhat troubled by the public utterances of some of the members of the Planning Committee, uh, actions which lead me to believe that they may go into the review process with closed minds. I really pray that they can quell, quell any preconceived notions and strive for objectivity during their deliberations. Whatever direction it takes regarding the wind issue, the Douglas Township Planning Commission is going to be making history in the next year. Future generations will look back on its members as those who, when faced with a challenge, chose the easy way out, or will hail the commission as dedicated citizens who ignored the loud voices of naysayers and looked into the future identified a potential electric power shortage as a disaster that it would be, and did the right thing for the community. Thank you. Pete, you want to be next? Yeah, I'm Pete Phelps, Douglas County, and I do not represent Apex. The uh, copied uh, Pearson Ordinance plus four restrictions could be summarized in one sentence. Thou shalt never lease, construct, or operate a wind tunnel wind turbine in Douglas Township. Because you've ex accepted a memorandum, which I wanted the six months, like your attorney originally put out, 
they're just going to kick the can down the road like Laura said. I'm going to ask you to have them review at public meetings every three months their progress. If they haven't made any progress after six months, you might consider dismantling the uh, committee because we need to get something done and just use common sense. My closing comment is, when you're traveling on vacation and you see a wind turbine, turn around immediately, go home, because your vacation will be ruined forever. Good evening. Um, where would the board prefer that I Whatever. Okay. Um, I did have a presentation prepared for this evening. Uh, Mr. Anderson, the actions of the of the board and uh, extending the moratorium has uh, stolen a little bit of my thunder this evening, but I thank you for that. That, that definitely makes uh, things a little quicker for me. My name is Joshua Knoll. I'm here on behalf of the Douglas Township Energy Corporation. Um, we've heard tonight from a couple of individuals uh, speaking in favor of the project. Not surprisingly, they uh, are leaseholders in the project. They've got a financial incentive in this project, and I would urge you to keep that in mind when you're listening to their commentary. That's pretty consistent with what I've seen in more than two dozen townships around the state, that uh, when it comes time to discuss who supports the project, it's those who stand to benefit from it financially. Now, with that in mind, um, one of the things that I've been asked to address is the obligation that each member of the board has, and of planning commission, to act in the best interest of the residents. Um, and this is a quote directly from the Michigan Municipal League that says, the duty of a public servant is to represent the best interest of the public entity and to serve the entity with the highest degree of loyalty. The fundamental concept is that a public fish official is not to exploit this position and position of power in unjust or inappropriate ways. Now, as we all know, mistrust of government is at an all-time high right now. And I applaud the board tonight for taking some steps to help restore that trust that the public needs to have in its elected officials. Now, with that in mind, I'm also hearing rumblings, concerns, that citizens are worried that you're not going to do anything with the ordinance, that you're going to leave the 2017 ordinance in place. I don't put a lot of stock in that theory because that would be political suicide on the part of the board. You've already acknowledged that the 2017 ordinance does not have sufficient protections. You've already enacted a, an amendment to try to address that, and the people made it clear to you that it didn't go far enough. So I fully expect that this board is going to go forward and do what they've demonstrated the ability to do, which is to act in the best interest of all residents here to protect the health, safety, and welfare uh, of Douglas Township residents. With that in mind, um, there are a few things that I want to point out to you about the 2017 ordinance just to reinforce the need to revise that ordinance and provide some additional protections. As I read through that ordinance, there's one <coughs> sentence in there that I think you should say uh, which is that sound should be measured at the property line. Beyond that, you can scrap the entire rest of it. It provides little to no protection whatsoever. There's no height limit whatsoever. There's no limit on shadow flicker whatsoever. Um, you have no reference whatsoever to a complaint resolution process, um, which is obviously very concerning. The setback would give you the shortest setback in the state of Michigan. 1.25 is, is times the height is what's listed in the, um, in the 2017 ordinance. That means a 600-foot turbine could be 750 feet away. Um, and oddly enough, it doesn't say from what. The ordinance doesn't say where that setback begins. It just says it's 1.25 times the height. That leaves a giant gap to drive a Mack truck through, guys, and that's something that you truly need to address. Um, as we as we move forward with the uh, Planning Commission. Now, the Planning Commission obviously has an arduous task to review just reams of paper of scientific data, of uh, other ordinances from around the state, and you know, that's, that's certainly going to take some time. And it, from what I've seen, the fact that they already have a draft ordinance that's being circulated certainly shows that the Planning Commission is putting in the diligent effort that's required to do their job, and I think they should be applauded for that, uh, not threatened for the timeline. Um, I, I will say that the one thing, the other, there is one more part of the 2017 ordinance that's good, relatively good. Um, it does address signal interference, 
radio, TV, microwave signals. Um, and it doesn't fall into the trap that it only limits electromagnetic interference, which is something that frankly doesn't really get produced by wind turbines. It is more just generic signal interference. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any language in there that says the board has authority to take action if there is signal interference. So you've got tools at your disposal to help protect your residents that need to be added into the ordinance to make sure that that happens. Same with the complaint resolution process. There's just no reference whatsoever to a complaint resolution process in the 2017 ordinance. Clearly, if these things do get built, uh, history has shown us that there will be people that have complaints. There will be people that have problems as a result of it. And those people should have a process whereby they can come to you as their elected officials to try to address their grievances. Um, you know, moving on, and I'm going to be short tonight because, like I said, I, I came here to address the extension of the moratorium, and you guys have taken care of that already. Uh, but as someone who's been involved in more than two dozen of these around the state of Michigan, I'm going to give you a little free political advice and take it for what it's worth. But from what I've seen, you have a large number of residents who are seeking protections uh, from the dangers of improperly sited industrial wind turbines. If you pass an ordinance that provides them with those protections, and it turns out that the proponents of wind are correct, that in fact, most of the community does want this project without those protections, they can put it up for referendum and it'll get voted down. And I doubt there'll be any repercussions for those of you up there on the board. But from what I've seen, from about a two to one majority, people do want those protections. And if the board does enact an ordinance that doesn't provide them those protections, you can expect it will be put back up for referendum. And you can expect that the citizens who didn't get the protections that they felt they needed are going to look to you and blame you for that lack of protection. And that's going to have political consequences for everyone. And so, by all means, you know, do what you think is best for the community. But I would say that it's, it's easiest for this board to adopt an ordinance that provides the protections that the citizens want and force the citizens to reject that than to try to put an ordinance out there that doesn't provide the protections that the citizens want and force them to reject it and come after I appreciate your time. I do appreciate the work that you guys have done. It is an absolutely thankless task that you're up there dealing with. There is absolutely no way to make everyone happy. There's, I've yet to see a win-win situation when it comes to wind energy in Michigan. Maybe you can be the first, but I would be quite surprised by that. So I, I wish you the best of luck as you continue to deal with this, and I'm happy to continue to serve as a resource for the board and or the planning commission. Thank you. Thank you. start having meetings every 30 days. Hopefully we can take some of the one that was presented the other night, some of the one that got voted out, and with Mr. Johnson's help, we can make something come together. That's the plan. Um, I'm going to open it up for public comment now. For anybody else who wants to speak, everybody needs to say your name and address. Um, you get three minutes. <coughs> Uh, every speaker shall be only allowed one opportunity to talk. And the rest of this is pretty much what we went through the other night. Um, if it gets if it gets too much out of hand, I'll shut the meeting down like it did last month. And hopefully it doesn't get out of hand. Um, everybody gets a chance. Three minutes, your name and address first, please. Okay, anybody want to be first? Ben? Ben Reynolds, Douglas Township. I'd like to thank the board for passing the moratorium. <clears throat> I'd like to thank Jack and the PC board for their efforts. Um, <clears throat> and I appreciate Jack and Sir having the effort to get in more meetings to get going on this. <clears throat> I know it's not a question and answer thing here, Terry, but will the meetings be posted on the website? Uh, and I assume they're open they'll, to public? They'll be posted someplace and they will be open to the public. Okay. I know. Jack's got another plan in mind too, and I, I don't want to speak for Jack, but we talked a little bit before. Out of the last six months moratorium, probably these guys only had 30 minutes of actual time to work on their ordinance. Mm -hmm. What we had talked about, and it's his meeting, he can do what he wants, but I think they're going to try to plan work time first, 
and public comment later. At least give them a couple hours to work on it. But because actually, I don't know when we started working on this, but out of the last six months, seriously, they've only worked on this for 30 minutes. You know? I know. <laughs> so that's the plan. Hopefully, we can make it work. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, anybody want to be next? I'll go. You got one back there. Melissa Bannon, Douglas Township, 4397 Kendallville Road. Um, I want to thank the board immensely for doing the moratorium. We had collected over probably 60 notes, 100 signatures all together, in anticipation that you might not. Um, that's all we could do in a week's time. We're not that fast. But there are how many people are here probably signed this tonight? Who wants safe ordinances? Raise your hands. Wow, thank you everybody. So I want the board to pass that to you guys. Thank you very much. You. I'd like to thank Mr. Nolan for coming today. Some of your points were right on. Um, this is a long struggle, it's a long battle. We 100% want you guys to work for a safe ordinance. So I agree 100% that you guys need to come in and do work sessions and we can keep our mouths shut for a while. Okay? Thank you. Um, so that's all I have to say and thank you. some of them that are for, some of them are against, and like that. And a lot of the people, a lot of you folks probably have kids that go to school, um, school age kids. In school it's called bullying. And I don't know what they call it out here in the public, but when I have PC committee members that get spit on, called names, and several other things like that out in public places, what do you call that? Um, you know, I'm just thinking here, let's all grow up a little bit and uh, you know, give us some time to work on things. You know, and there was a comment by Mr. Nolan tonight that said, um, you know, you, you probably better do this or you better do that or you're going to be thrown out of office. That would almost be a threat to me. That would almost be a threat. So bullying goes a long way. So, and just everybody that's got school kids, let's just remember that, okay? Thank you. Kelly? Kelly Jefferson. Jackie's yeah, my husband. Um, 5648 North Derby Road, Douglas Township. Um, 